paused the video yet and tried the question on your own, please do so now. In order to begin to understand this question, we must think of the following equation. Now, of course, here we have the resistance of the wire, and we can see from the formula that the resistance is equal to the quantity rho, which we've labeled down here as the electrical resistivity measured in ohm times a meter, multiplied by the length of the wire divided by the cross-sectional area of the wire. Now we can apply this formula to both the aluminum and the copper wires. Using the symbol AL for aluminum and CU for copper, we have attached subscripts to the resistivity of copper as well as the cross-sectional area of copper, and then the same thing with the aluminum. We did not put subscripts on the length or the resistance because the question mentions that they have equal length and equal resistances, so it's not necessary to use a subscript to denote that as being a different quantity. We'll next make a comment about the area. It is generally assumed in these questions that the wires are cylindrically shaped. And when they refer to area in the formula, they're referring to the cross-sectional area of this end of the wire. Now, of course, that is a circle, and the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So it's going to be worthwhile to replace the area with pi r squared for both the copper and the aluminum. Now, since the question is asking about the radii, it's going to be useful to solve the resistance formula for the radius. And to do that, perhaps the first thing we would do is multiply both sides by pi r squared. Now, when we do that on the right side, the pi r squares are going to cancel. We could then divide both sides of the equation by pi times capital R, and then finally take the square root of both sides of the equation, and that will isolate little r, the radius. Now, this will become useful because the question is asking us for a ratio. Remember, a ratio simply means to divide two quantities. So what we can do to establish that ratio is to take the radius of the aluminum wire and divide it by the radius of the copper wire. And when we do that on the right side, we're going to use this expression for both the aluminum and for the copper. So let's fill that in, and we're going to see that there will be a lot of canceling and simplifying. So once again, just notice that for each radius, we have one for aluminum and one for copper. We are using this expression, the one that we had just solved for, for the radius. For the aluminum, we've put the subscript of aluminum next to its resistivity, and then also for copper, the same idea. Now, we should notice that the length term is going to cancel, as well as the pi r terms. We mentioned earlier that they had equal lengths and equal resistances, so those terms will cancel. So in fact, we're just left with the square root of aluminum's resistivity divided by the square root of copper's resistivity. You could even simplify it further as follows. Basically, we took advantage of the property that when you have the ratio of individual square roots, you can write that as the square root of the ratio. Now, these resistivity values simply have to be looked up in your textbook. There must be a chart in there somewhere that gives the values. For aluminum, we have the value shown, and then copper, the value shown. And when you plug this whole thing into your calculator, don't forget the square root, you should get approximately 1.3 as your answer. And that is indeed the correct answer for the ratio of the aluminum wire radius to the copper wire radius. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch this. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Also, you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address listed on the screen.